Hey guys, this is Emmanuel for your iPad. So exactly how to use it. This is an iPad Pro, this is the bigger one. However, if you guys have the smaller one, it's gonna be the exact same instructions for both of them. And again, it doesn't matter what color you guys have, how many big gigs, it's gonna be the exact same tutorial for all of you. It's gonna be the same manual, how to use it. So let's just get started. So let's say you guys have a bunch of apps opened and you don't wanna just minimize them. Go like that slightly. And then what you guys wanna do is scroll up, 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 and you fully close them. So they're no longer running in the background. So that's how you guys can fully close an app from your iPad. Besides that, you guys are gonna take a look at your Safari. Safari again is where you guys are gonna use Google to search for anything. So here is Google and go on and have fun. And yes, you guys can download Google Chrome if that's what you like on your iPad. So how to do that from your App Store. From your App Store, it's gonna be you're gonna be downloading any app for your iPad that's not here already. So any social media apps, Facebook, Twitter, anything like that from their Instagram, everything you guys can download from the App Store. Besides that, if you guys go down here below, you guys are gonna see your mail. If you go to your mail, you guys can import anything. And to import your mail, all you guys have to do is log into it. So for example, if you guys have Google, so Gmail account, just put your Gmail right there. It's gonna ask you for your password. And there you go, it's gonna load up everything, all your emails in here. So that's how you guys can transfer all your emails from your other accounts. Let's say you guys had an Android device with Gmail, you guys can go on and sign up here, and there you go. Once you sign in, it's gonna transfer everything here, and that's because it's online. It's not something that's actually stuck in your Android or your other iPhone or whichever other device, computer you guys have, it's online. So that's how you guys can transfer any, any emails to your iPad. Other than that, we have our camera on top of here. It's pretty basic. If you open it up, you can just touch on allow and take any pictures, just tap here in the middle, and there you go. That's the real basics. Video, you guys can change it to video on the left hand side. Video, start video, stop video. Remember to just tap once. I've seen a lot of people when they're in picture mode, hold on to this, hold on to it. It's gonna take a ton of pictures, which can be fun, but what you mean really mean to do take one picture now other than that the pictures that you're taking on the top of here you guys are gonna notice it's live mode or live mode off live mode means that it's almost like a video that it creates for you when it's live so it's really nice to have life on but some of you might want that off because again it is taking a little bit more memory if you have life on but life off will just take a normal picture whereas with live it's almost like a video and a picture at the same time from here, you guys can set up your timer as well for three seconds, 10 seconds. Your flash, you can turn it on and off or have it automatic. You guys can flip. So you guys can view your front camera as well from here. So that's gonna be down here below. So if you guys tap here, you can choose your front camera. So right now it's my, using my front camera instead of my back camera. That's gonna be using my back camera and my front camera so I can view myself in it. So you guys can see my hand there and that's because it's right in front of my camera. You guys can actually do that from within FaceTime or from within other apps as well. You guys will see this. So you guys can flip between the two cameras. So those are the basics when it comes down to your camera on your iPad. I know a lot of people use their iPad to take pictures. I personally don't like using my iPad to take pictures. It's just too big, even the smaller sized iPads. And especially with bigger size iPads, it's really uncomfortable. From there, we've got Apple TV, that's a hub. This is a hub where you guys can see a bunch of channels, not just Apple TV. Apple TV Plus is a channel and you guys can subscribe to that. You guys can accept the free trial as well if you get this is brand new. And there's a bunch of stuff in here that comes included within this channel. However, if you guys wanna search up, let's say Netflix and all that stuff, you guys could look up that stuff from here as well because this is just a hub. Now again, I'm talking about the hub, the Apple TV app itself. Apple TV Plus is a channel, so it's very good to know that difference. Anyways, so just get out of there. For news, it's pretty self-explanatory. You guys are gonna see magazine subscriptions that you guys can do here. There's a bunch of free stuff as well. You guys can look up news. So it's kind of nice to do this. There's a bunch of stuff that's free plus paid. So it's a nice app that's available at the moment. For books, you're gonna go into books. And then from here, a bunch of books are free. And there's a bunch of ones that you guys can download also paid. Now as for maps, these are the apps that you guys get. However, keep in mind that you guys can download Google Maps here as well. So you don't have to use the maps that's provided by Apple. Now podcasts, on the other hand, 
let me just tap on here, are exactly that podcast. These are free. So you guys can go on and listen to anything here, just play it away. And if you guys go home, you guys can see all your shows if you have anything yet. Of course, you're new to this, so you don't have anything yet. But you guys can go on and browse and search up anything you like. Now as for files, once you get started downloading stuff, this is where you guys are going to find all your files. So iCloud Drive, so that's going to be everything that's in your iCloud. However, you guys can have files just in your iPad, not in your iCloud, so it doesn't take up space there. Recently, that's your garbage, obviously. And let's keep in mind that in my iPad, you guys can make folders. So make a folder in here. Just click on this folder sign right here. Name the folder anything you like. Click on done. That's your folder. You guys want to get rid of that folder. Hold on to it. From here, you guys are going to see these options. Delete folder. That's how you guys can delete any folders from your iPad. There's also ways to view your folders here. So let me just create a few folders. Just one, actually. And then I can view it as a list. I can also change this to view as a column. And I have all those options. I like icons, so I'm going to leave it as icons. But again, we can always delete or create more folders. You guys are going to see all the options here. You guys can duplicate your folder as well. So make a copy of it. Uh, other options that you guys will notice here is compressing it. I would not do that from your iPad, by the way, but it does work. You can add any text. You guys can copy it, move, share. So you guys want to share one of these folders, just click on share. You guys can go on and airdrop it to another iPhone, iPad. You guys can mail it out to somebody. And there's a, a few other options there as well. So that's when it comes down to files. Now FaceTime, on the other hand, if we tap on it, you do need to sign into your Apple ID. So make sure to sign in for this to work because FaceTime does use your Wi-Fi or your data. Now let's take a look at reminders. These really quick. So reminders, to add any reminders here, I like to use Siri a lot. So I usually tell, hey Siri, remind me of this. It's gonna add my reminder or add an event. I always talk to Siri. So I highly suggest doing that, especially for alarms as well, just talking to Siri. But if you need to add one manually, you guys can always do that down here below. So right here, we can type anything. That's a reminder, and there you go. Add but for reminders. So that's really quick. So we're gonna get out of there. Now let's take a look at alarms. Again, I like to use Siri, but if you guys want to go and manually do it, this works from where you guys can do it. Click on alarms. Once you open up alarms, you're gonna see this. Click on the plus sign on the top right hand side and add any alarms that you like. So I'm just gonna add that one safe. And there's my alarm. I can set it up or change it at any point in time. But again, to set this up, you guys can use Siri for sure. I highly suggest doing that. You can use Siri for a bunch of stuff, so you don't have to manually do it. But if you have to, that's where it is. You guys also have your stopwatch here. You guys can start it. You guys can record that lap, second lap, stop at any point in time. Look at timers. You guys can time anything as well. And you can set up timers, again, using Siri. So I highly suggest using Siri. But you guys can start it, pause it, or cancel it from right here. So again, you guys can start anything, any timer, or stop it at any point. World clocks, you guys can add any clocks here if you like. So that's the plus sign on the top right hand side of your screen. You guys are gonna see the plus sign. Click on the plus sign and then just add one more clock in there. And there you go. So these are your world clocks. You can add or take out any of them just by clicking on edit on the top left hand side of my screen. I'm gonna see edit, tap on edit. You guys are gonna see that minus sign and then click on the minus sign, well tap on the minus sign on any of these in order to delete them. So I can delete, delete, delete. Usually there's too many of these that you guys don't care about. And we can definitely delete all the guys that you guys want and just keep the ones that are important to you. So let's just keep that out of there. Contacts is where you're gonna have all your contacts. So you guys can just add manually your contacts. You guys are gonna see, you can put your first name, last name, company, add the phone number, email, and then just keep adding any contacts. Hopefully you guys don't have to do this manually. You guys import your stuff, but if not, you guys can do it from here. Other than that, your messages. So this is iMessage. iMessage uses your Apple ID. That means it's using internet, it's using data. It's not an actual text message. So whoever has an iPhone or iPad will get that message. If it's an iMessage, if somebody has an Android, they will not be getting any iMessages, especially from iPads. If you, have, you guys have an iPhone, you guys have a data plan or not, the person that you're sending that text message to is going to be sent as a text message to Android devices and usually as an iMessage to anybody that has an iPhone. 
So that's the difference between the two. Now when you're talking about iPads, we're just talking about iMessages. So make sure to sign in and then just send any iMessage you like. All your pictures will be kept here. See this? That's your app. Allow, continue. And here we go. Remember those pictures that we took in recordings? This is where you guys can play them or delete them. So to delete any pictures from your iPad, hold on to it, delete. There's other ways to delete this as well. If you guys want to delete a ton of pictures, press on select, choose all of them, delete. So we just deleted everything. If you guys want to recover any pictures that you deleted from your iPad, it's pretty simple. Go back here. Then you're going to go into recently deleted. From recently deleted, view album, put in your passcode because that's secure. And from here, you guys can recover anything just by tapping on select, select that one. Then you guys can select a few and recover all of them. Or if it's just one, just hold on to it and put recover. It's going to go back to your library. So I can go back to my library and it's right there what I recovered. If you guys want to recover everything, because you guys have my library, there's absolutely nothing. I can select them all, press down here below and recover every single one of these. So there we go. Go back to library and they're there. Now let's say you guys don't want to recover. You guys want to go on and fully, fully, fully delete these guys. We're going to delete them again. And I'm going to show you that in recently deleted, that's where you guys really want to truly get rid of these pictures. Don't want any evidence left. <laughs> you guys are going to go into select, select them all, go down here below and delete. Or you guys can always go on the top right hand side. So let me just focus in that better. Or you guys can just go into select and just select two of them. If you guys want to just delete two of them forever. So delete from this iPad. So down here below on the bottom right hand side, you guys can see delete this from this iPad and it's been deleted. So again, to fully delete any pictures, you guys do have to delete it from your trash bin. That way it's completely gone from your iPads. It's not going to be here and it's not going to be under recently deleted because there's nothing left. So let's just get out of here. Other than that, I'm going to show you Find Mine. Find Mine is really, really cool. You have to sign in. So remember to sign in. And you always want your app to know where you're at so you can track where you are at. Well, not you, but the iPad itself. So if it ever gets lost, stolen, you guys can track it down. You guys can lock it, blacklist it by turning this on. So make sure to turn it on. Now, if we take a look at your iTunes store, this is where all the good stuff happens. So you guys going to buy any music or listen to any music. There you go. Same goes with movies. All right. And you guys can go to TV shows as well. So this will give you the option to go to store. It's gonna direct you here so you guys can buy this. But it's very important to go here and that's because it's going to give you this option for purchases where you guys can look at all your purchases. Again, you have to be signed in. Besides that, you guys have your notes. This is something that I use a lot. So you guys can add any notes just by, go ahead, tap away, and start typing. Or if you guys wanna draw within here, you guys can also draw. You have an Apple Pencil, you guys can draw with that Apple Pencil as well. But you don't need an Apple Pencil, you guys can just draw yourselves. And then when you're done, just click away. You guys want to add another note here. It's pretty easy. Just go on the top right hand corner. You will notice this. It's the farthest away option. And then you just add another note. You want to add another note again on the top right hand side. Another note. And those are my three notes that I created right now. If you guys want to delete any of your notes, just slide. You guys are going to see this, tap on it, delete. So again, to delete this, all I'm doing is sliding. I'm tapping right here on this icon, the garbage icon. It's going to delete that. Same thing goes with this and delete it. So that's how you guys can add any notes and delete them. There's other options here as well. I'm just going to a little bit more into it. Just play with it. You guys are just going to notice what you guys can do. And lastly, we should take a look at your calendar. This is different than reminders. This is where you guys can go on and put in any major alarms that are going to repeat themselves throughout your calendar year, such as birthdays and all that stuff. To add anything like that, see this plus sign? That's where you're going to go. Type in birthday, for example. Then if it's a birthday or anything like that, you guys most likely will choose all day. And most likely you want an alert one day before. 
you can add a second layer two days before one week before or on the event depends add it and it's being added so that's how you guys can add any events to your calendars you guys can also take these away just by holding on to it delete and it's been deleted from your calendar so that's how you guys can delete or add anything to your calendar and last but not least to search for any apps besides going all the way here and just looking at them you guys can tap here and search for a specific app such as books so there you go there's books gonna find that so that's for specifically for apps and if you guys want to add any widgets to your screen you guys can always just hold on you guys are gonna see the plus sign on the top left hand side and add any widget you like i'm just gonna do batteries for now and there's my widget for batteries that's if you guys want to bring back any widgets into your home screen or you guys can move this as well so edit home and then just move this to your secondary screen it doesn't have to be in your home screen it can be here so there you go that's the difference so you guys can have your widgets there as well obviously you guys can delete this at any point in time just by holding on minus sign remove done or just click away and you're done but anyways this was a quick manual for your ipad doesn't really matter which ipad you guys have this will apply for all of them if you guys have any questions comments you guys can write down here in the comments area don't forget to subscribe and like thank you